Welcome to our latest rebroadcast, podcast number 84. Know that everything will open. Isaiah 1 featuring Mike from COT. This episode originally aired on June 1st, 2024, exclusively on counciloftime.com. For more details, check the link in the description below. Welcome to our latest rebroadcast, podcast number 85, prophetic word today. Get ready for a test featuring Mike from COT. This episode originally aired on June 3rd, 2024, exclusively on counciloftime.com. For more details, check the link in the description below. To gain deeper insights, please visit the Council of Time's official website linked in the description. Before diving into today's rebroadcast podcast, episode 85, titled Prophetic Word Today, get ready for a test, we're introducing Super Chat premieres and a new merch store directly on the N Generation Project channel. You can now purchase our latest designs on a variety of merch, from hoodies to limited edition prints and posters. We will release a video sharing what the plans are next for N Generation Project besides our COT repodcasts. Stay tuned for these exciting updates coming soon. Visit our store now to explore our collection and help sustain our efforts. Thank you for your continued support and generosity. May the Lord your God keep you all, always. Enjoy the podcast. Blessings. Okay, everybody. We are starting. God bless each of you out there. If you guys wouldn't mind, uh, let me see. Let me do a sound check here. I think we're good to go. Yes, we are. We most certainly are. Hope you guys have good volume. Hopefully I won't get too, uh, I don't want to get worked out. Sometimes I forget. And, uh, you know, yesterday the volume was so low because of me. Because of my, I got a little excited. And so the system adjusted, turning everything down. Well, I was not excited, as excited, when it came back on. And it did not know what to do with that. Hopefully we have that corrected. It's good to see you guys. Listen, I want to tell you guys from the onset, everybody here, uh, if you are of the Western culture and society, it's, it's going to be a test a test that will last about a week. Don't panic. Don't speculate. It is a necessary test due to the situation we find ourselves in. You guys are no stranger to international events, detentions. You're no stranger to that. You're certainly not a stranger to weather phenomena. Most importantly, the war. There will be a test it will be coordinated across all Western countries, all of them, each and every one of them. So when you hear about it, don't speculate. Not one civilian is going to say anything about this test because they don't know about it. The root and the heart of this test is for the safety of the citizens. I want you guys to understand something so that you're in the right mindset. A long time ago, I remember... Uh, back in 2000, the year 2000 and up to 2016, everybody was preoccupied with the thought that uh, everybody was trying to kill them. That recently died out, okay? That died out, that, that ideology died out a long time ago. Now that people are out of the mindset of folks, you know, trying to kill them off, right? Uh you can, you can soberly hear some things and hopefully take them in and understand the situation. Understand those who don't have Christ. Understand those who don't have the promise you have. If a person does not have a relationship with Christ, they're not looking forward to his coming. They don't believe in such things. And so the only thing they have is this earth. They're going to do everything they can in their power to protect themselves on this earth. But they will also position themselves to be in places of power. Those are two things they'll continually work on. That means they're going to save themselves from the sun. They're going to save themselves from you know, all these celestial phenomena that are on the way developing and coming. They want to save themselves from people who won't go along with their ideologies. That's when wars happen. They're going to save themselves and their families. 
regardless of what you think about folks, they care about their families. An evil person in the Bible, it says, if a, I'm going to paraphrase, if a terrible dad, an evil dad, knows how to give good gifts to his children, how much more than your heavenly father will give good gifts to you. So even the darkest of people have folks they're going to look after and care about. Even criminals look after criminals, right? Even the most hardened and dark-hearted individuals have some type of brotherhood with someone. So they're going to try and protect themselves. Keep that in mind. And keep that in mind because sometimes people act as though these people are immortal. Right? They do. They're not. The only thing they have is earth. That's the only thing they have. And they're going to attempt to save themselves from everything they perceive. Now, that should give you a big hint into what's actually happening. Because what they perceive, they act on. What they perceive, they get themselves in position to take advantage of. Right? And if you take a close look at the world, certain things they have let go, right? The suspicions that people have had, they're not panning out. They're not. Let's go ahead and face it and have a little correction here. I know that people get angry. They got angry over COVID-19. They got mad when people did not grow horns and tails. They did. And the populace kept going. In fact, throughout history, there have been plenty of things that, 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 uh, evil people have done, nobody talked about. And the things that people speculated on, they never took place. Now, I'm one of those people, right, I don't like to speculate because that does no good. And in case in point, a good case in point, is COVID-19, right? Everybody was supposed to die off from COVID-19, but it didn't. See, people became, um, people believed in their own narrative is what happened. Right? Anybody can talk convincingly. They can. And convince uh, the average person that something could take place. And, and vaccines are quirky. The vaccines do not come from the father. So naturally, something is going to be wrong with them. Right? For example, the uh, chicken pox vaccine. Do you guys know that about 400,000 people died from that? Chicken pox. Do you guys also know that nothing tops the number of those who die from the flu each year? Did you know that? Right? That number is so far up there, it's not funny. So more people die from the flu than any vaccines, than all the vaccines, and everything else put together. Believe it or not. Right? Believe it or not. Those numbers are high, people that die from the flu. So people die from all sorts of things, of which COVID-19 was didn't even count up to the you know, large percentage of those compared to these other things that happen every single year, every single year, right? Now, I'm telling you this to keep that in mind so that you're sober about things, so that you're not, you know, you don't lose your cool over what humanity is scared of. Plus, don't we have a savior? Yes. If you have a relationship with Christ, don't be afraid of any vaccines. Don't be afraid of any disease. Don't be afraid of these things. People will get affected by just about everything. Do you know that uh, there's a large group of people that die from poison ivy every single year? There are fatalities from a lot of things. Compared to the fatalities we're about to see, nobody has seen anything. Nobody. Okay? Nobody, nobody, nobody. Remember that. Nobody. Hmm. There's a truth behind everything. Now, these prideful people, they do not want to accept responsibility for what they did, right? Like the test they did on African Americans, like the test not too long ago that they did on all um, Latino people, like the tests that were done to all uh, Euro-Caucasian uh, people. So you don't know about those tests. And when people go to the hospitals, they confirm those tests. This happens all the time. They call it a necessary evil. In other words, it's something they do to keep ahead of things, right? Sometimes yes, uh, sometimes no. Some of these people, if they didn't have checks and balances, uh, they would, you know, everybody would be in a laboratory. And essentially, you are in a laboratory. You are. You are. You still go to the grocery store. You guys are still ordering food out. You don't know what's in that food. You didn't grow the cow. Right? 
And plus, all animals have to drink, and they breathe the air, correct? You can't escape the air of the earth. Well, too bad the air is polluted. It is full of contaminants and things that you don't want to think of. And in fact, one scientist put it, the air you breathe is far worse than the COVID vaccine. Do you know that? That's a fact. You can't escape that. So be thankful to your Heavenly Father and don't walk around with, with a type of schizophrenia uh, over these things that the earth is doing, that people are doing in the earth. But place your Father first, right? You're not going anywhere until the Lord says you're going somewhere. You're not going to go through anything until the Lord says you're going to go through something. Nothing is going to happen to you until your Father in Heaven has decreed, and that comes through Christ. It goes straight to you. And if it goes to you, it is to raise you, not to destroy you. All these things happening to you in your life is not to diminish your life. No, it's that you may have life and have life more abundantly. See, people get things backward because all too often we walk away from these foundational principles of Christ. We don't know them at all. Don't be frightened by these things. We know that we live in the end times, right? We do. We know that we live in the end times. You know, I, I and some, I guess some others have been screaming about the heat. I know I've been doing it every single year, that the heat is coming. The heat is coming. People should acclimate themselves. That you're not going to have the selection of food items you once had. You're going to have your money, but you won't have the food selection. So then limit your palate so that you don't, you know, that, that will play mental tricks on you. If you have a desire for something you cannot get, you'd be surprised how many people are addicted to food. And they have no idea they're addicted to food or certain things. Take, for example, those who drink coffee. Suppose one day there's no more coffee left. Just think, you think that's going to bother people? Yes, it will. Is anybody preparing for there to be no coffee? Probably not. Should they prepare for that? Yes, they should. They should interrupt their own drink cycles so that they understand what they're going to go through without the coffee. Right? Caffeine headaches come, this and the other comes, unless you trick your body. To trick your body, you have to stop doing things on schedule. If you stop doing things on a schedule, you will not be hooked. They had a good example for everybody out there. It is controversial. I, I probably shouldn't say it. But these folks, especially Big Pharma, right? It should be a known fact. They don't want you to get well. They want you to be manageable. Here's what that means. Has any pharmaceutical product cured anybody? Has it cured anybody? No. It made a condition manageable. Not cure. It didn't cure you. And if it did take away one, some of the major symptoms of one thing, it gave you something else, right? All of you, if you've been following the news, you saw, I mean, the perfect example of the same thing. Let me mention it to you this way. See, some people, you, you miss it, right? Sometimes you miss the greatest things because you're emotionally compromised in seeing certain things. Anybody who's been following Hunter Biden's, um, his, his trial, something so important was said, something we covered here in COT many years ago. We did, we covered that. Something that people... And immediately they came back with experts saying, oh, no, don't do that. No, don't do that. Now, say, Hunter Biden, the trial, just in case you're not familiar, he was on crack cocaine. He was addicted to crack cocaine. And he lied on a federal form to obtain a weapon while it was on crack cocaine. You can't do that. No, you can't do that. Anyway, he mentioned extracting something from a frog and that he had no symptoms a withdrawal or anything else for a year. He was sober for a year after that. After they showed that, after because they had to cover that subject. That was one of the main subjects today. When they covered that, I noticed they had people come back on and say, oh, no, don't do that. Don't do that because it can cause. Now, listen to this. You tell me. I want you guys to listen with your ears. This medical expert comes on and says, nobody should ever do that because it can cause hallucinations. It can cause headaches. And I'm sitting there listening to this, right? Like, wait a minute. This guy was on crack cocaine. 
If you're on crack cocaine and you're trying to get off crack cocaine, I seriously doubt if you care about hallucinations. I, I seriously doubt if you care about a headache. You know you're dying. You know you're hooked. You're trying to get off something that you're addicted to. They do not want people to have natural remedies. Crack cocaine is a synthetic drug, right? It's put together by chemistry. But in that fraud, and they, 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 they actually inhale or smoke something from that fraud, and it actually works. They don't want people doing that because if people did that, they wouldn't have their methadone clinics. Right? They couldn't give out to methadone and, and suboxone and all these things that they have people hooked on so they can manage them. They have accountability of everybody who does drugs. It seems like they're settled with that. There, there is something behind that. Drugs will never, ever stop until the Lord comes back. They will always have a necessary corridor of drugs that come into this country, period. Point blank. That's the end of that. You can close up the border. You can do whatever you want. I'm telling you right now, it's not going to change the situation. You may not believe that. If they put a wall up on the border right now and let no one into this country, it would not change a thing. I'm just letting you know that. It's not going to change a thing. It won't. If they have to get people into this country and product into this country through peanut butter, they're going to do it. Right? Anyway, those are disclosed, declassified operations nobody cares about. The drugs in this country was an operation, and now they cannot. Can you imagine if they stopped drugs from coming into this country? Do you not realize we'd fall apart in less than a week? The entire country would fall apart in less than one week. You do realize that. One week and we would have an apocalypse. One week. You think it would clean people up? No. There'd be mass death all over the place. That's what would happen. They already know this. It will never stop. No, it didn't matter what anybody does. It's not going to stop. Why? That, when Trump tried to build a wall, and they stopped him from building the wall by the courts, right? They did this. The courts did that. Uh, why do you think they did that? You gotta. Sometimes you got to wake up beyond wishful thinking. See what's happening. Reassess everything. Do it with your Christian eyes. Be a believer, right? See what's going on and take a step forward in faith to do what you can to assist in a solution. But make sure that solution is your father's solution. Make sure that solution is founded and does align with the word of God. Make sure of that so you don't lose your footing. Make sure of that. Make sure of that. Now, having said that, what the Lord gave you is so much more powerful than any remedy anybody would ever have. We get here in COT. Now, I, I, you know, I run my mouth a lot. You guys know that. But somebody answer this. Why do people write in? And they speak about healings all the time in COT. Why? We don't talk about healings all the time, do we? Why do people, you know, they write in all the time. They're talking, they, they, they do say they got off this they were addicted to this and they got off of it they were addicted to that and they got off of it they tried everything nothing worked they employ these small things now they're free they can't even believe it but they're free they're so excited it's like they have a new lease on life even in troubled times some of these people are incredibly excited happy overjoyed i mean they're overjoyed and they're just average people why is that happening I, this is happening all the time you're talking about overseas, to the U.S., everywhere. It's happening. Right here at COT, us little lowly people at COT, why? I'll tell you why. Because we encourage a relationship with Christ. That's why. That's why. That's why. And when people get that relationship with Christ, and they become sincere behind their relationship, He, He will begin their deliverance process. That's why. That's why. Because we teach people not to sow seeds of discord, not to sow seeds of hate and evil and all this kind of stuff. So they're not reaping that stuff anymore. Some of the people that, that, that came to COT, and I remember most of you all, when you came to COT, you were something else. You mentioned that word politics, and oh my goodness, the chat room would turn red. You guys would start throwing letters and characters at each other. You remember that? 
Well, you could. If you could throw a letter at somebody, you probably would. People were stomping out of the chat room. I don't want to hear this. I want to hear my idea, right? And as soon as they start sincerely searching for Christ, their whole life turns around. It happens every single time. And it happens in this, in this preferred method, obviously. A person will become sincere about Christ. Instantly, they face opposition. They'll say, Mike, I was searching for Christ sincerely, and all of a sudden, this, all this stuff is happening. My advice to them is weather the storm. It is supposed to happen. Weather the storm. Some people even wrote back and said, well, wait a minute, because uh, you know, so-and-so told me it's not supposed to happen like that. Yes, it is. It's supposed to happen like that. As soon as you put your all towards Christ, you are supposed to have opposition. Because that's like giving every demonic entity an evil and iniquitous spirit around you an eviction notice. You're telling them to get out. Their time is up. They don't want to give up. They don't want to give up. Your, 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 your home, you, and, and things around you have become their apartment complex. You're kicking them out. They're homeless. You're essentially trying to make demonic entities homeless. They don't want to get out, so they cut up. But the Lord allows that. You know why? He said everything is going to be tried. You're supposed to be opposed. If you endeavor to do anything that is holy, you are supposed to be opposed. If you are not opposed, how can it be holy? And when you continue, when those people continue, they have their breakthrough. Their breakthrough comes. In fact, it's so funny because once they start pursuing Christ, they're, they're no longer concerned about all the stuff that's wrong with them. They get so focused on their relationship with Christ, they forget about their addiction. They forget about this that they're struggling with. They know they have those struggles, right? But they put everything towards going towards Christ, learning of Christ with the addiction. You know how some people say, well, straighten up first, then go after Christ. No, no, you go to him as you are, problems and all, dirt and all, hangups and all. Go straight to him in your condition, open and honestly. That's what is getting these people through. You guys know I have a habit of saying, go before the Lord, open and honest. Don't hide anything from him. Because if you hide it, if I had a piece of candy, right, and I put it in my pocket to keep it, right, if I, if I hide it from you guys, I'm also keeping it. I'm going to keep it. If I put it away, if I'm not displaying it, I am keeping it. So are these issues in life. We go before the Lord like we don't have issues. Don't we? Sometimes we're not open with them. And when you go before him, as you go before other people, understanding and realizing who he is, that's when the these and the thous stop. Right? These, these uh, pre-formatted prayers. That's when your sincerity comes forward. The Lord knows what you have need of before you ask him. He does not need to hear you ask him anything. That is you stepping into truth when you address him. Therefore, if you step into truth when you address him, now you're really addressing him. Jesus is not going to be found outside of truth. He is truth. Is he not? Yes. So how can he be found outside of truth? To approach the Lord is to approach him in truth. That means full disclosure. Open your heart wide open. Show him everything, the rotten, the good, the bad, and the ugly. That's how you go before him. You don't hide anything. Be authentic with him. You do not have to tell everybody about your stuff. I don't know what law there is in this 2024 where people truly believe they have to tell everybody everything that happens in their lives. That's a problem. I can't, people do that though. Something will happen. I, I went over this yesterday. Something will happen. A person gets, uh, somebody almost hits them. Right? They'll get on the phone. Do you know so-and-so almost hit me? They get home. Hey, somebody's in the house. You know what? Somebody almost hit me. They talk to their best friend. Oh, somebody almost hit me. They tell everybody. I've even heard people have things happen to them. They get upset. You say, why are you so upset? I don't know who I'm supposed to tell this to. No one's going to believe me. What law is there that you have to tell anybody? a 82 year old lady I was on an Air Force base one time and this lady was talking about her experience with some encounter right 
she was frustrated because nobody would listen to her. And I told her, I said, nobody has to listen to you. You just make sure. You just make sure that whatever you have a count of, that you have a count of, there's no law that you have to tell anybody. You go and be free. You don't have to tell anybody. That doesn't justify what happened to you. You don't have to have people believe you. You don't. Take that situation, say, yes, it happened. If you believe it happened, say, yes, it happened, and go forward in your life and be free. People stop in life when nobody can hear them. It's a shame, but it happens. Why? Because they made this unwritten social rule that you have to have at least, you know, a small group of people believe you. The whole UFO subject, people think, that, yeah, we get that disclosure. Everybody's going to believe it. No, they're not. If we had disclosure, demonstration, two crafts, another mothership hanging in the atmosphere, people would look at that and say, well, I still don't believe it. It's Project Bluebeam. Don't ever try to convince someone of your truth. All you have to do is to ensure that your truth that you have is in fact truth. That's all. That's it. Make sure it's truth and you walk forward in your life. In your freedom. Don't let people hang you up. They're not your approval factor in this earth. It may seem that way. But that's not the way it is. Your father is the approval factor. Not people. I guarantee you, people here right now, their lives are limited because no one will believe their story. You have a story and you have no one to tell it to. And you feel that part of the quality of your life is not there because you can't find people to hear it. You don't have to tell people your story. You just make sure you understand that story. So when the Lord begins to work with you, you can recall that story to see his hand in your life. Because everything that happens to you, the believer, is for your deliverance, for your correction, right? Correction is for deliverance. You don't have to have all this, you know, um, uh, corroborating things so that you can live your life. That's not going to help you, believe it or not. You think it will, but it's not. Be open with your Lord. Right? Let that be a pearl. Do not cast your pearls before swine. They'll take your pearl, trample on it, and turn and tear you to pieces. That's what happens when you share what is precious to you with folks who don't think it's precious. That's what that means. Have you ever had something very precious that had great meaning to you? And you went and told somebody else, but they didn't perceive it as such. And because they didn't get excited about it, because they couldn't see exactly what you saw, you're the one, your heart changed. You had a little bitterness. You were a little saddened, upset, because it was not received as you saw it. That is casting your pearls before swine. You take what is precious to you, and you go tell somebody else thinking they're going to receive it like you've received it. You're deceiving yourselves. Don't do that. They'll take your now casting it before swine and they'll turn and tear you to pieces. What that means is you take what's precious to you. They cast it down to the ground. They laugh at you. They say all manner of weird things against you. And then they'll use it against you. Well, aren't you the one that said so and so? Ha 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 ha. That's when they turn and tear you to pieces. In other words, Satan can weaponize the truth God gives you. Do you hear me? He can weaponize it because everybody is not going to, everybody's conditioned. Their heart is not conditioned like yours. Remember that. And it's okay. It's okay to hold these special things in your lives that happen. It's okay to hold that. In the Bible, I know somebody said, well, Mike, in the Bible, it says confess your sins one to another. I said, no, it doesn't. It says confess your faults one to another. And a fault is not a sin. If I walk down the steps, and I keep missing the last step. That's a fault. That's not a sin. That's, a, that's something I'm incapable of doing. If I go to somebody's house and I keep walking through people's screen doors, that's a fault. That's not a sin. Why do you, why do you share your faults with somebody else in the first place? Not just anybody, but those of the same spirit as you. Why? So they can know you. 
if you know my faults and I know your faults, right? And we both approach, we have an obstacle before us. I could say, hey, don't let so-and-so come near this. They don't handle this situation well, but I do. So let me go handle this so everybody can get by. See how that works? That's how it works. If you know my shortcomings, you can look after me. If I know your shortcomings, right, I can look after you. That's very simple. That, that's common brotherhood, common decency. The, the, those are principles of unity. Something that's becoming, uh, uh, something that's becoming quite uh, rare in this day and age. Very rare. That's how that works. Now, when it comes to sin, you confess your sins unto the Most High. People are not your Savior. The Lord is. That's why I tell people, people, when I meet them in person, I don't want to know anything about their past. I'm not concerned about the past. I'm concerned about the person in front of me, not the person you were yesterday. Doesn't matter if you robbed a bank yesterday. I don't care. I'm concerned about the person that's before me today. I know people change. Every day, you become a different person. Every day of your life, you never stay the same. I am not interested in who you used to be. I'm interested in who's before me right now. That's why every day to me is a gift. And all the people are a gift. And nothing gets old. I live my life that way. I don't walk around with these weights other people walk around with. Sorrow all over the place, dark thoughts and that. I don't walk around like that. No. I appreciate whom the Lord has put before me. No matter what they were yesterday. Because I believe in the forgiveness of Christ. And yes, what that means is, if somebody did something horrible yesterday, right? That's not who they are right now today. No, they are. Anyway, so now you have it. The drill's coming up for everybody. Now, when it comes up, don't speculate, right? Don't speculate. Just listen. You know, hear what the people are describing. You probably won't have to comply. They will have to alert you about it. Uh, it will affect your devices. But we live in a time when a war could easily break out. I believe we're already in World War Three. I believe it's not to the point yet where people... The, the casualty rate is not high enough. That's all. That's all. I believe it's already been done. I do. Us Americans, let's go ahead and face it. If something is not happening in our front yards, we often deny it until it does happen in our front yards. But that's a pious mindset. You have people overseas dying Every single day. I mean, they're dying big time. You have people in most most countries that are dying all over the place just because it has not come to your front door does not mean it doesn't exist. We, a lot of people do the same thing with prophecy and revelation. They truly believe because it has not come to their front door yet hasn't happened. That's why I think of prophecy different. I do. You guys know that. I think of it different. Most people think of prophecy one way. I think of it different. It's almost like I can see it taking place. Right? Like the ideology of the four horsemen or, or the, uh, the four. Now, Jesus releases those four horses. Nobody else does. The Messiah does. He sets the time when those spirits ride. I even look at those differently. The first one, what do people say the first one is? First horse is? What do they say that is? I see that very differently. I see that matching Matthew 25 perfectly. Matthew 24 and 25 perfectly. When the Lord said, nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. That's what I see. Jesus opens the seal. A horse goes forward for the rider, right? He has a bow in his hand, no arrow. And he has a crown. He goes forth to conquer and to conquer. That's all he does. So he has a mindset to do what? Or a spirit to do what? To overcome everybody else. That's how kingdoms start fighting against kingdom. I see these horsemen, what people call horsemen. That's a spirit Jesus releases at different times. That's what I see. I believe they've already been released. That's what I believe. I believe that. I don't believe they're coming. I believe they've already been released. Especially. The, and the black horse. A lot of people see that as financial collapse. 
I never saw it that way. And, and I stick I stick to this because I had an understanding of these horsemen when I was a child. Now, what child do you know would, would just cast away? If you had understanding of something in the Word of God when you were a child, you know nobody gave that to you but your father, correct? You know that, and that's why I keep it, because that was an understanding I've had all my life since I was a kid. And so no, that didn't come by influence. It didn't come by somebody's book. It didn't come later in life. It didn't come by any other way than by the living God. It was a natural understanding I had. I voiced that understanding with my mother at a very, very, very young age. I mean, we're, we're talking toddler here, right? And um, that was that. So I believe that ever since then. I've been seeing it happen. But again, sometimes we think in this very, very uh, pre-programmed way. If it does not happen in our immediate vicinity, we'll say it's not happening yet. And I believe that's a mistake because revelation is for the entire earth. Therefore, you have to back away from your own you know, region. You have to look at the whole earth to see what state we're in. I just can't look at my house. It's okay. Well, my house is okay, so it must not be happening. I can't do that. I have to step back and look at the whole earth. Look at everything. Everything the Lord gave me an ability to see, I have to examine. So that makes me operate a bit differently. Just a bit different. Now we live in those times of great demonstration and consequence, unfortunately. And I know you guys are hot. The heat is here, right? Well, it's not here yet. It'll, it'll get here. Somebody says, Mike, were you born in August? Well, I was born on the earth. It's a pretty good answer. That's a politician's response. Isn't it? That's how they respond to things. I hate to say it. That's how newscasters, that's how they interpret things. I know you guys don't buy this stuff. I heard, I'm not going to mention names. I just want to say this and, and then we'll move on. But President Trump said something and President Biden said something. And the newscasters, for the life of them, totally missed what they said. I heard, listen, th there was an interview with President Trump, and, and they said, well, uh, what about the people that, you know, jailed you? You're going to try to jail them? He said, well, they certainly deserve it. That's what he said. That was the first time he said that. That's what he said. And then immediately, they cut him off and said, you see that? He's going to pay back everybody who did something against him. I said, oh, my, 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 my. They can't even hear. They're so used to their own propaganda, so prideful in their academia. They precede people before the person ever comes to a conclusion. They do Biden the same way. They do everybody the same way. They assume they know what the person's conclusion is. And they run with it. It is the weirdest thing I've ever seen. They can ask a person a question, do you think it's hot today? And that person will say, well, you know, it's pretty hot right now. And they'll say, ah, this person says that the heat is so unbearable, everybody's going to die. That's basically how they report things. They just add stuff to it with no shame. They do. Hopefully you guys can learn to look past that, to learn to hear, right? You can still hear them, but learn to hear beyond them, right? Learn to hear beyond them because they show you everything they can show you. They can't help but to do that because of pride. There's one thing about pride you may not know. A person who operates with pride cannot help but to show his or her hand every single time. So if you can look without being offended, you'll, they'll show you everything they know. Did you know that? That's anybody with pride. They cannot hold anything back. They have to show you what they have. You just cannot listen to them and believe everything they're saying. You can't do that. A person of pride will show you everything. You know why? Because they're always positioning themselves above everybody else. Remember that. They'll show you everything. That's an actual, you know, that's an actual tactic. If you ever go to a foreign country, you don't need to speak their language. All you have to do is find any prideful person out there. They will show you everything. They'll brag about everything. They'll take extra time to brag. They will not take extra time to help a soul, but they will spend 
extra time to brag. So if you can open your ears to truth and open your eyes to what's happening, they will show you everything. Everything. Everything, everything. Just take note of something. This is why they don't, those people, they don't really make me angry. Here's why. You know why? Hmm? It's up to them to seek relationship with Christ or not. If they choose not to, that's on them. But they must, they must, in accordance with the word of God, live out their lives, period. A lot of people don't know they're being led in a certain direction. They don't know it. And if you understand those biblical principles, you, you'll, you'll just marvel at it. Learn Proverbs. Study Proverbs always. It is a fascinating book that gives you the results to every single activity, every single uh, endeavor a person may 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 um, uh, attempt. It will give you the results of that. And it never fails. Never fails. Somebody said they're deceivers of souls. Well, I'll tell you something. Here it is. Nobody can deceive you unless you want to be deceived. Nobody can deceive you unless you want to be deceived. A long time ago, a lot of Christians were concerned with removing all deceivers. They missed the entire biblical principle in doing so. Who allows deceivers to be on this earth? Your father knows everybody on this earth, what they're doing. If he really does not want a person to be linked up with you, that person is not going to exist anymore. Do you know that, right? If there was any element that could truly somehow mess up what the Lord is doing, that person would not exist ever. Whatever it is or whatever it was would be taken out of the way, which means everything on this earth has been approved to be here or it cannot be here. Remember that. Now, can people be deceived? Only if they want to be deceived. Only if you, no, you know what, there are certain things I cannot be deceived in. Because I want nothing to do with it. Nothing. So I can't be deceived. You can only be deceived by something, right? Or taken in by someone who has something in them that you want. In other words, a per, if, if, if a person had something I desired, right? And they began to speak. And I could, I'm, I'm hearing for that thing I desire. Sure, they can deceive me because they have something in them that I want. If a person is doing anything they want to do, but there's nothing in them I want, they cannot deceive me. They cannot. It'll never happen. Hmm? Somebody said, Mike, did you hear uh, Erdogan say Israel will be cursed? I'm surprised he's still standing. Israel is God's business. Israel is going to go through her day. Israel has to be tried. Israel has to go through a fire. The beast kingdom will be prosperous and will wear out the saints of the Most High, those in Israel. Get yourselves ready for that. Listen, there's a time coming when you will see Jerusalem under siege. That land is going to be parted and it will look like evil is prospering. I'm telling you right now, people are going to be disheartened when they see it. Because in their minds, somehow they believe that nothing can happen to Israel or God will get them. That's not what the Lord said. In fact, these evil elements on the earth are to bring everything about. And Israel is the cornerstone of the change of all things. And you will see it. So if Israel was overcome this week, if they were overcome this week, I mean absolutely defeated, how many of you would not understand that? Hmm? How many would not? See, if you're if, if a person is going around saying nobody can touch Israel, this and they're not, that's not what the Lord said. The Lord spoke to the prophet in the Old Testament, and he was not happy with those who were speaking such things. He said, You're telling people they're going to have peace, and I have spoken no such thing. It's very easy in the Bible. Israel will have peace when the Messiah walks on that ground again. Remember that. Wars and desolations are determined until the end. 
wars and desolations. So they will always have wars and desolations until the very, very end. A lot of people don't know that. They don't. And so guess what the Bible says? During the same time Jerusalem is under siege, scoffers are going to come forward and say, where's the promise of his coming? I thought he was going to deliver you. I have a firm belief that will be the time when many fall away. When they see Israel under siege, that's going to be enough proof for them to say God doesn't exist. It will. And they're going to fall away from the faith. See, it's not going to move me left or right because I understand what's coming. I believe the word as the word is written. I don't necessarily believe everybody's interpretation. All of us are going to have the truth in the end. Right? But I do not interpret the word of God based upon conditions right now. I can't do that. God will interpret his own word. So I never want to proceed him in doing that. I don't want to be the guy that's right. I want to be the person who obeyed. That's what I want to be. All right? So we're going to have a mess in the Middle East. And when it erupts, it's going to touch the whole face of the earth. And the power center to all things is going to be right there in the Middle East. That's my belief. I believe you're going to see every nation fall. You're going to see, I saw, for example, I saw Rome burnt up where the Vatican is. It was on fire. The people couldn't escape either. It was the saddest thing I've ever seen. It was so bad, right? You guys, you don't hear me talk about Italy that much, do you? I used to say something about it ever so often. I don't mention Italy anymore. Have you noticed? I don't really mention Italy anymore. Because I keep seeing the same thing over and over again. Every time I inquire about Italy, right, to get rid of some confusion, I start praying about it. The Lord shows me the exact same thing. So I quit talking about Italy, period. I pray for the people I do. I hope the people here, but they've got to open their eyes. They've got to desire the Lord and not people. In this world, people desire people. I've heard some things I did not like, and I'm not one to take sides. I mean, they, uh, listen, there's some major faltering going on, and I hope you guys are not trapped up in the middle of it. That's why I'm praying for leaders, especially in America. Because if they cross, if they continue to cross certain lines, people are not going to be happy. Especially now when you have top leaders saying all praise to you know who, and it's not the Lord. Hope you're praying for your leaders. There are people in those circles of leaders that are trying to cause people to worship that leader. Hope you're listening. Because I didn't hear not one complaint of anybody who's going to vote for Trump about this individual. And I keep telling you guys, if you have a favorite in politics and you have a favorite in politics, pray for the person. Because, I listen, if I liked anybody, I would not want them to be a president. Not in this White House. No, no, no. Because I strongly believe what the Lord has given me. And anybody who sits in that seat of power is going to be sitting there with their mouth hung open and blood pouring out. They have no idea what they're getting into. So if they go there for any other agenda than for this country and the truth of the people, then their servitude will not be their salvation. They're going to step into a landmine. They're going to wish they had never desired that position in the first place. This, this thing repeats too often in history. You have a lot of wishful thinkers out there. You have a lot of wishful thinkers saying, this time everything is going to change. They say this every single year. And I'm telling you again, without prayer from the saints, it's going to be the same old story. But if you take notice, it's getting worse and worse and worse. And this time it's going to be for keeps. No one escapes this time. No one escapes this time. No one. So I hope people who believe in Christ are praying. I hope they're praying. Somebody says, what? This is crazy. Well, I'm crazy. I know that. I know I don't go along with what everybody else says. 
I have to go with what the Lord gives me. When I believe the Lord gives me, I will not fail to give everybody else. For example, when Obama came into power and everybody said, oh, yes, he's going to answer this. I said, no, he's not. He's there to test people. And by the end of his presidency, this country is going to be divided. Do you guys remember that? How many times did I say Obama was an obstacle to, to stop putting their energy into Obama? Everything was Obama. Everything was. There are people still trying to justify things about Obama. They're still trying to do it. They're trying to justify their viewpoint from many years ago. He was an obstacle. I told everybody before he got there, the Lord will put somebody in power because the Lord showed me and I trust what the Lord gives me and I'm not a prophet. I'm just a person with a microphone. The Lord will put somebody in there, a stumbling block for people. And you know what I said? I said, you really got to watch the one after Obama because the one after Obama, that's the one that's going to solidify and cause that divide to be real. Did I not say that too? It's, it's in the archives. The Lord gave both sides what they wanted. One side wanted their savior, so Obama came. The other side wanted their savior, so Trump came. Where are we at right now? Hmm? Both came. Where are we at right now? The country is divided. We're close to a coup. Civil war could break out at any moment. And you still have people saying all hail their favorite leader. Not one time am I hearing any of them saying we have to return back to Christ. Who's talking about my Lord? Nobody. The Lord Jesus of Nazareth, the Savior. Who's doing that? Not doing it. I'm sorry. I cannot boast of men. If you look carefully, you can see the spirit that governs flesh. I do not support that at any level. The only answer that will ever come is from Christ. And because people have failed to really look for that, because they have done everything but tell everybody we need to return to Christ. Now we're in the days of massive consequence. What is that term you guys use? Like boiling frogs. They don't even know it. But it's taking its toll. So get ready for an upset, everybody. Get ready for an upset. Because if the Lord does not wake up his people, his people will not awaken. They're way too trusting of flesh. Some people love the Lord when they get what they want. And when they don't get what they want, they think the world is falling apart. Do you think the Lord wants his children like that? No, he desires us to see the truth. It's like people sometimes having a good time in church because their bills are paid. Let me ask you something. Who's going to praise the Lord when they're home and their how their car is repossessed? Yet they still say Jesus is Lord. Who's going to teach on the scriptures when nothing is working in their lives? Who's going to tell a person, keep your trust and your faith in Christ? When their life falls apart. Who's going to tell you that God is good? What person will tell you that when in their lives there's nothing good in it? We're going to see. We're going to see. Because a wolf is coming. The wolf is coming. And when all the perks are gone. Then and only then will you hear the true sentiment. Of humanity. But you better get ready. Some of those you believe that will still serve the Lord will hate the living God. They will feel betrayed because they don't have their stuff. When their stomachs go hungry, they're going to curse his name. And if something happens to their children, they're going to turn their back on the Most High. I'm telling you right now that people are following the Lord because they they get things they want. That's going to cease. Everything must be tried. And after everything is tried, only what's true is going to stand. There'll be no fake stances after this. And 
and then you'll see. You cannot know anybody until the crucible comes. When everything goes wrong, that's who people really are. You've heard that backward all your life. You've heard people say, well, I'm sorry. You know, I, I was feeling sick, and that's why I said what I said. I'm sorry. No, that was, your, that was your true self coming forward. See, when we get what we want, when we're feeling okay, all of us are good actors. All of us are. All of us should be in Hollywood. We're good actors. But when things are going wrong, that's who we really are. You're going to find a lot of people short-tempered. You're going to find a lot of people want nothing to do with anybody. You're going to see the truth, and you will not like it. I'm trying to give you a warning before it gets here to get yourselves prepared to see the truth. Now, thank God some of us have already gone through this. We live in certain conditions where we're tried like this. So some will remain consistent because they were never spoiled. But a great many are not tried. They're not proven. They'll fall away. Get yourselves ready for that. Because when they don't get what they want, when their life, when their situation breaks down, when they lose power, they're going to have a fit of carnality that rivals Satan himself. But for now, I'll be back in a few minutes right here at COT. Okay, everybody, we're back, and it is hot. I certainly do hope you guys are acclimating. I do. Expect, uh, you know, I expect temperatures uh 15 degrees hotter a 15 degree increase in temperatures i expect that to come i do about a good time plus that couldn't happen at a worse time because of all the instabilities we're about to uh have in the atlantic but we'll see as that progresses right we'll get some info together for you guys i'm doing that now at breakneck speed for the KD files uh, to get that database done. That was a big database. Right? I messed it up in the first place. I, you know, took a shortcut, put everything all together about a year ago, right? And uh, that database just wasn't going to cut it, so I had to uh, break it down into small tables and subtables so that you guys could search for things uh, easier and reference everything, and it'll be good to go. So, it I, I pray it pays off for you guys. After I'm done, that'll be in a short in the short term, like a couple of days or so, probably in a couple of days. Um, I just pray it pays off so you guys can find things quick, right? And I hope it's useful for you guys. It was useful. Somebody said, did Mike say he believes the white horse is referring to the Messiah? No, I didn't say that. I did not say the white horse refers to the Messiah. I, I don't believe that. Not the first one in Revelation. You have two white horses in Revelation. One is at the end of Revelation, and it is Messiah on that horse. One is the first horse of which Messiah opens the seals, and it goes out. So that's what I believe. But I believe those seals are already broken. All right, now for that first segment, I know I was just, you know, lipping things off. Somebody has a question. Brother Mike, my only leader is Christ Jesus, so how can I pray for any leaders Never voted, never participated in anything in the world. Well, in the Bible, it says pray for your leaders. That's what the Lord said. Now, why would the Lord say that? Why would the Lord say pray for your leaders? Because everything they do is going to affect your life. So you're not here by yourself. You're always put at the mercy of somebody else. And the Lord did everything on purpose that we would learn submission. That we would also... See, listen. To be a leader yourself, right? To be a leader is to be a master servant. That's in Mike from around the world's Proverbs. To be a leader is to be a master servant, meaning, right? Um, a leader knows how to serve the needs of everybody. That's what a leader is. A leader is not somebody who just makes a bunch of policy decisions. That's not what a leader is. A leader knows how to subject themselves to somebody else, but, but most importantly, how to serve everybody. That's what a leader is. Right? A leader has a heart for the people. And to pray for your leaders is to understand that. Understand what a leader actually is. A leader is not somebody who calls the shots. Right? That's why so many people are heartless in corporate in the corporate world. Because that's all they want is power over people. That's not a leader. That's not what that is. A leader is somebody 
who actually leads and knows how to lead and is intimate with the people, a shepherd, a master shepherd, a pastor, in, in my terminology, is a master shepherd, somebody who knows how to serve the needs of all of the congregation. That's what a pastor is, right? Similar to a, a, um, a dad, a real dad, right, is going to serve the needs of his children. He'll be that provider. He knows how to do a lot of things for the sake of those kids, the country that you live in, your respective countries, you have leaders in those countries that make decisions. Those decisions affect your life. If you pray for those leaders, you're obeying the Lord. What did the Lord say about us who obey? First of all, he said, if my people who are called by my name, right, would humble themselves and pray, turn and seek his face, he would do what? He would, he would, he would hear from heaven. And come and heal the land. So when we are obedient to the Most High concerning these earthly matters, our Father is involved. If we work in disobedience, do you really think he's going to be involved? He already told us he would not. He would not be involved. See, all too often, submission, submission can only happen when you believe in the ways of somebody else, we're not talking about false submission, like as what happens in so many, you know, so many people's uh, countries and industry. No, we're talking about true submission. True submission is when you believe in the cause of somebody that's ahead of you, that's over you, right? That's what true submission is. So it's not you're not being forced to do it. You actually believe in a cause, and so you support the individual making those decisions. If we do that to the Messiah, we're going to pray for our leaders. When we pray for those leaders, we act in obedience. If our hearts are involved, we act in a completeness, and the Messiah is going to get involved with that leader. Say you have an evil leader. I've seen this so many times, it's not funny. If you have an evil, unjust leader, and Christians begin to pray in obedience, right? For that leader, the Lord gets involved when his decisions affect you. It happens every single time. It'll happen to judges, magistrates, presidents, senators. It happens to everybody. Your father's going to get involved to change the heart of that individual. And before you say, well, God just doesn't go around changing hearts. Of course he does. He changed Pharaoh's heart. He hardened Pharaoh's heart. The, the reason Pharaoh said no to Moses was not because of Pharaoh, not because Pharaoh was against Moses that much. No, it was because God hardened his heart that he would say no, because every time he said no, God did what he demonstrated. His power, his resolve to whom, though, did he demonstrate that to Egypt? No, he did that for the sake of his own people. Those plagues that came, those are for his people to see. That was for God's children to see. The same thing is happening now. This stuff that's coming upon the earth, you think it's coming for the sinner? No, it's coming for you, for you to see. It's going to help out your faith. It's going to get you in position. Because the Lord knows that without it, you're going to be in that, that realm of question. Well, I don't really know why this happened. You know, it really could have been that over there. So he's going to remove all doubt. He will. Now, in this time, remember something. When he does this, it will be harsh. When God removes all doubt from what he's about to do, it is going to be harsh. I mean, very harsh, right? So we have to understand that, too. But he already told us that at the end of the matter, we're going to understand it perfectly. That's in the word of God. We will understand it perfectly when it's all said and done. Perfectly. Somebody says, harsh, you're gonna, the dead will be all around you. How many times we read Psalm 91? How many times do people read the Psalms, period, and they find out about all the dead around them, yet they can't see it? Some people have had very protective lives, right? Everybody's not appointed to see um, uh, some of the weight of your things. Some of you will not be here when things break out, just like certain people are not here now when things are breaking out. I know some older, uh, normally my friends are old. They were old. They were old, you know, 20 years ago. I had 75-year-old friends, things of that nature. And they knew they were not going to share this time with me, right? But we were on the same page. I like the elder people because I have so much in common with them. I hate to say it. I have hardly anything in common with youth. I've been like that way a long time. I, a uh, long time. <clears throat> but... 
This is where we are, folks, and it's coming. Get ready for it. Somebody says, what's a Zionist? It's a label that man gave to people in, in, in massive error, right? Because that's one of those, that's another title man has come up with to give those who they believe are zealots for specific things in the Middle East, specifically speaking about Jerusalem. Right? They have no idea what they're doing, but they label things anyway. They, they take note of mankind. He likes to label everything because mankind wants to, dis- he wants to control everything. Why? Here it is. Mankind is full of fear. See, if you're not governed by the spirit of the living God, you are governed by fear. Do you hear me? Fear turns into anger. Fear turns into hatred. Fear is a relative of all those things you see in the world. They're governed by fear. They do everything by fear. And the number one thing that scares them to death is death. Death will always scare a sinner. Death will not, it will never scare a person who has really dug in with their relationship with Christ. Do you know why? It's impossible that death scare anybody of whom the power of death has been taken away from that individual. Now, if you're out here, if you believe in Christ, but you're scared of death itself, then you're not believing all the way in Christ. And that's something you have to settle. The more you settle, the more you're going to overcome that fear. How many people are scared of dying, honestly? How many people are scared of dying? How many? You're fearful of dying. It's okay. You don't have to put your name in there. I know lots of people are. Lots of people are fearful of death. Right? I Listen, I was before a bunch of people one time. I put this to the test. We had a discussion. And I asked people, I said, how many people are, are afraid of death? And a lot of people said, oh, not me, not me, not me. I said, well, I'll tell you what. How many people want to go see Jesus right now today? Wouldn't that be awesome? Everybody's like, yes. And you know what I said? I said, I can help you get there right now. Let me go in the back. And they all had this worried look on their face. But I said, wait a minute. I thought, I thought you guys were not scared of death. What, what are those looks for? I'm just going to help you out. I'm going to help you get there today. Boy, they were concerned, right? But I made a point. We say things, right? But I'm telling you now, when death, when, when those elements of death get around you, it will change you. If you have not dealt with it, it will change you. Everybody can say they're Rambo, or for they're put in that condition, or that position where Rambo was in. When you're put in that position, only then can you resolve it. You have to face death to say you're not afraid of death. If you've never faced death. Now, I'm not talking about a car gets near you and somebody says, well, a car almost hit me. I almost died. No, not that. No, I'm talking about a person who has been through a lot of pain. Hear me, a lot of pain. And that pain lingered. And they know what that pain is, right? And a person, not not some near-death experience, but I'm talking about pain and torment. If you've gone through pain and torment, only then can you say if you're afraid of death or not. That's when you can say it. Because, see, some people have gone through pain and torment. And I'm telling you right now, they'll do it again for the sake of somebody else. They'll do it for the least of all of you. They'll do it in a heartbeat. They'll go through all that again if it could assist you in any tiny way. They would endure it. Those people are not afraid of death. To them, death has no sting. But to a person who says, well, I don't want to suffer, but I'll die, they don't know anything about death. And they're they're trying to acquaint themselves with it, get an idea about it. No, we're not talking about that. Not talking. Women women who have had children, they're acquainted to to, uh, certain death pains. If they can remember at the height of their issue, well, if they had a natural birth, they should be acquainted with it. But let's face it, many people are not, right? Which is why many should never brag on life or death. But just simply say, you know, you have your resolve towards Christ. Because I'm telling you this because of this reason. Because a lot of people are fearful of death. Many of those who say, you know, I'm not going to do something to try and save my own skin. The truth is you will. Unless you have been tried. You will try to save your own skin. It is natural. It's in that moment, though, when somebody else is with you, right, that you'll know if you'll make a sacrifice or not. 
That's when your genuineness will rise. Your genuineness will never rise before it's needed. It's only going to rise when it's needed. It's just like a father. Our father will show up when he must show up. He's not going to show up to give us some comfort before we go into something, some proof. He's not doing that. We walk by faith. Our father, he does everything as needed. He does not do things like that to, you know, to show us and to give us a pat on the back and all this. He didn't do that. He didn't do that. No. God works in the realm of truth. So when we need a specific thing, he will show in a specific thing. Not based on what we think we need. Based on the truth of our needs. No one will precede God. No one. No one. We have one appointed for that. That is Christ. And he is the word of God. He does not precede him. He acts on every command the Father gives. But us down here, we had to get ourselves ready for some things. Hmm? Ready. Ready to get ready. Sometimes you may think you're ready, but you're not. Take this heat, for example. How many people are ready for the heat? You're honestly ready for the heat. The heat is coming. How many? Ready for the heat? We'll have this discussion again the end of next month, and then you let me know if you're ready for the heat. Because then, by then, houses will have burst into flames. Then we'll see. I don't like heat. I don't. And so I've been acclimating myself to heat by wearing long sleeve shirts, long sleeve t shirt, and a long sleeve button up shirt over that, despite the temperatures. It is miserable. It is grueling. But it's working. It is working. I know it's going to get a lot hotter than what it is right now. At least a 14 degree rise across the board everywhere. In a very short time, probably about a three week time period. It's pretty short. Fires are going to burst out too. Humidity will be quite low in certain areas and pop-up storms are going to be quite vicious. Are we guys ready? Now they're saying, the climatologists are saying it's too late. It's too late. The carbon multiplier is, is already starting an effect they warned about 30 years ago. And in 2007, it's already begun. The very thing they said, oh, we can never afford to let this happen, is happening. It's called a carbon blanket. And what that means is temperatures could, could literally double. That's what it means. That means everything will happen far quicker than anybody is prepared for, truth be told. That will map out, gentlemen. We're going to map all the elements of that out, get, a, get something going for people. People need to know about that. I guarantee you they're not informed. They're going to politicize on the situation. You know what? In fact, world leaders will be at a meeting one day. They're going to be talking about something. Or well, they're going to get their press and everybody's going to see them and look at them and everything else. And during the middle of that meeting, the opposite of what they boast will take place. The Lord warned us when he said in the Bible, when they say to themselves, you know, peace and safety. Then he said, sudden destruction come upon them. That would be bad, right? be bad when they say peace and safety and we all know when they say peace and safety they have reached they have accomplished their plans somebody says mike here in arizona it's already 110 how much hotter can it get it can get as hot as india people are dying like they're dying big time in india because temperatures are higher than that your temperatures in arizona are going to be higher than that it's intolerable what is happening? We're here. Can you guys believe we're here in this moment? These things are actually taking place. So listen, that makes uh, that makes planning uh, priority, family planning priority. The word of God is principles priority, right? Your position with Christ is so important right now. There's still time before this darker time comes. 
I know you may think it's dark now. It is not in comparison to what's coming. This is this is this is a gift. Even the heat and the storms a gift. We have a dark time coming. We do. We have a dark time coming. Now, in order to understand this dark time and this storm that comes, understand the people of this world. In all honesty, do you hear them talking about Christ Jesus? Or do you hear them talking about themselves and their favorites in the world? We have to go through it. And once we go through it, once this thing gets initialized, right? once people start seeing, um, everything will change. Everything will. Take, for example, us right here at COT. When these things take effect, I'm going to tell you this before it ever happens, right? Everything we're talking about, and I'm not, Pat, I'm not bragging on myself, but what we're talking about is going to begin to happen. People will go and you have other people who will dig up every fact about any theory they can find to get everybody to listen, right? And people are going to gravitate towards these people. They're going to go straight towards those people that instantly become experts. You know, I said this about the storms and the heat that we're going through. And I said, when the heat comes and when the storms come, you're going to have people that all of a sudden they scoffed the subject some years ago, but now they're experts and everybody's going to go running to them. You know what they said today on mainstream media? You know what they said today? They actually corroborated what we've been talking about for some time now. They actually did. See, they too understand it is now in a true crisis moment. We're at that point where nothing can be reversed. We're over the temp where things can be reversed, which is why they said they're going to have to spray the atmosphere to block the sun's rays. But how you act during this time is going to be everything. The other folks are going to jump on like they've been acquainted with this subject. They're going to become experts. People will gravitate toward them. They can only go so far because I'll tell you something. During that time, if a person is not getting their information from the Holy Spirit, it's just not going to serve people well. There are going to be people out there in the world. They're going to be after folks. I hope you're listening. Those of you who talk to others, don't be discouraged when people reject what the Lord has given you. Just make sure that you're telling them what the Lord has given you. Don't alter anything to suit the audience. Tell them the truth of what the Lord gave you because the time will come. They're going to go after everybody who did not tell them. They're going to go to that pastor and say, Pastor, you never taught about revelation. You never taught about these things. And they're going to oust that individual by force. I'm telling you what's coming. The Lord has, how many times does he have to tell us that the wolf is coming and then he describes the wolf? He said, when the wolf comes, the hireling is going to run. Not the appointed people he has appointed, but the hireling. The people who do what they do for money, they're gone. They do what they do for increase, they're gone. They do what they do for fame, they're gone. They're going to run, but they won't escape. And the sheep are going to be scattered. That's what you're for. Those of you who have weathered the storm this far. You have been learning how to take care of people. You've been learning how to deal with all types of people, good and the bad, tolerable and intolerable. Can't you see that? The Lord has had you around all types of people. I know some of you push people away when they come because you don't understand why that person would want to come to you. You're skeptical about everybody. But the Lord is showing you a diversity of people because they're about to be scattered all over the face of the earth. They're going to want to know someone who knows, who has a relationship with Christ. That's going to become rare and hard to find. Hard to find. So we all have to get prepared for that. That means they're coming directly to you. Okay, folks. My goodness. I know you guys are hot. Hopefully you are acclimating. And if you do like I did, right, I put, I put on long sleeve shirts inside and outside, right? I um, ingest water by a schedule, right? It's very, it's very important so that your core temperature can begin to, you know, alter so that you're used to hot temperatures. There was a time when I couldn't take temperatures over 60 degrees. So I had to acclimate myself. I really had to work on that. 
uh, and I've been working on that. It's working now. I can tolerate temperatures up to 99. I start sweating at around 90. Isn't that something? I don't sweat until it hits 90. So that's pretty good. If I continue to do this, I'm going to be like I was in the deserts. And I won't start sweating until it's around 110. If I sweat at all. So you guys do the same. Because you know your systems. You do. You know what you're dealing with. You know if you can't take hot temps or not. I'm, I don't do well with hot temperatures. So I have to do everything that I can do. Uh, to get myself in the park. Somebody says, Mike, are we supposed to save water and have a generator? No, you're not supposed to do anything. Right? Listen to me carefully. Suppose a person says, oh, well, well, you know, I'm going to save everything. So I'm going to go get a generator. And, 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 and go dig a well. So they go do that, right? They do that. Something happens in the USA. They find out they have 36 hours to vacate their premises. That they can't take furniture. They cannot take all that stuff with them. Their cars are going to be parked and they'll be transported somewhere else down the road. Now, in that person's case, the generator is going to do them no good, Right? Neither will anything else, because a lot of people don't know about these movement orders. In certain areas, people will have 36 hours to get out of their homes. That property that you think you own, you don't own it. You don't own it. Right now, you own, by agreement, the rights to utilize that land, but you really don't own it. And if a war breaks out, Anything can be confiscated for the sake of national security. Well, now you guys know. Now you know. Somebody said, wait a minute. Somebody says, can you drink? Wait a minute. Let me go back. Let me go back. Let me go back. I want you guys to be careful, too. Somebody says, can you drink water that comes out of an air condition conditioning as long as it's filtered? I think, let me tell you something. About, let me tell you something real quick. An air conditioner in which the evaporator starts going, right? And you have a condenser in there too, and water molecules accumulate on those components. And, and su suppose they, they, they accumulate on, those, uh, on that uh, copper or whatever your, whatever your coils are, and they begin to condense and they drip down, right? You, you, I, I need you to listen to me for a minute. If you've had that AC in use, period, and it's been in your home, it has probably has mold spores in it already, right? It probably, more than likely, those water droplets that form also capture dust and debris because all the dust is being drawn up to that air conditioner and it's going to hit that water. It's going to hit the water. You hear me? So when you're talking about filtering, you can condense the water from a coil which would be better. But you have to watch the airflow. The airflow has to be in proportion to the ability of that coil to condense, right? So that you get max efficiency. If you start making something too large, uh, you're going to have a lot of redundant power and then, uh, of course, wreck your whole system, right? If you, if you don't have enough, you're going to overwork it. Or it's just simply not going to do enough. You have to know about ratios. You have to know about um, the cooling, uh, CFM factor with, with cooling and everything else so that you get an efficient system. It's a way to do it, yes, but, and can you survive off that? Yes. You gotta have charcoal. Better go buy you some bleach. Better do it now. Better make sure that you're not allergic to bleach. Bleach. And please, nobody tell me I don't use bleach. I use Clorox. Clorox is the name of a company that makes bleach. It's all bleach. So remember that, please. Yes. But yeah, we're headed for a pretty uh, diverse time. And it must come. It must come. Has to come. Has to, has to, has to. But be careful of that stuff. Somebody says I had to evacuate during the... Black Force Fire in Colorado, the police were saving my driveway and told me, yep, five minutes, yeah. 
And that was bad too, during that fire because they didn't have, you know, some people had no designated uh, routes to take, which is why it's important that you guys know what your exit points are in your respective uh, communities. That's, that's, that's real important. The fires will break out. They will break out. Somebody says, Mike, I heard the bleach has hydrogel in it. No, 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 you don't, you can get the bleach that does not have that stuff. That is that splash proof stuff that they're using, right? We're not talking about that. Get the other stuff. Get the other stuff. They have water tablets with, with, uh, purifiers in them. They have all sorts of stuff right now on the market that you can get. You know, you can get that stuff now. It, it's kind of like radiation pills. Nobody's talking about radiation fallout. And so the pills are out there, but as soon as, as soon as the threat level goes up one more tick, you're not going to be able to find them. You're not. So you always take care of something before, long before something ever gets there. Take care of it then. Take it seriously then. Any more questions? Uh, you guys do it. Somebody says, do we have safe ways to stay cool without power? PDF uh, on a PDF without power? Well, there are some demonstrations we can put together, yes. One of the biggest methods, the easiest method, right, is this. Take a washcloth or towel. Take that washcloth or towel and put a real, you know, damp that washcloth and towel. Make sure it's damp. And put a thin coat of, of water on your head, on your face, and on your upper chest, right? And then put a fan on yourself or fan yourself. As the water evaporates, it's going to bring down your body temperature. Now, you got to be careful. Because if you have an electric fan, listen, I'm telling you something. If it, say if it were 135 degrees in your house, you do that inside your house, turn a fan on and forget about it. You could actually, uh, you could actually get really cold. Your core temperature can drop too much. You don't want that to happen. I've seen people shiver over that. I mean, uncontrollable shivers when it was real hot. As water evaporates, it removes heat with it. That's what it does. So as it evaporates, it cools you off. Right? Your body is adapted to that process right now. The human body is. It is fully adapted to that process. But these are things, you know, methods. Uh, we can learn not a PDF. Though. We're not going to put that in a PDF. That'll be by a different format altogether. Right? So we can post and pull it as we need to. But it says... uh Somebody asked me something. I missed it. Well, let me go back. Let me go back. Let me go back. Let me go back. What's that say again? Oh, that was something else. My apologies, everybody. Ah, oh, here's one. 18 months. All oh, wait. Okay. Oh, even if it has, whatever it has in it, you can't get away. There, there's some bad. Somebody says uh, that the Clorox or the bleach has, has some, uh, you know, graphing additives in there and things of that nature, right? Well, it has more than that in there. But it's better than nothing. Hmm? Better than nothing. Better than nothing. The air you breathe has more toxins in it than anything you could ingest. Remember that, please. The Lord is sustaining your lives, not your carefulness to avoid poisons. It is the Lord sustaining your lives. Okay, what was that one? Why can't I get updated podcast on sound? I have no idea about uh, SoundCloud. So it's Alpha and Omega. Contact um, contact uh, Flash about that uh, system error. If you can help that person out. They said they cannot get podcast on SoundCloud. I don't know if that meant live or... or what that person will have to get with the admins they they run that uh they do everything in those sections we have a different time coming guys but don't worry i'm gonna i'm telling you right now i'm gonna give you everything i got and i'm praying it's going to be useful in all all areas of life that's what i'm praying for and i'm sure i do trust you guys to let me know if it's useful information or not. See, that's the first thing. I do not want that stuff to just be information. You're looking at uh, uh, pliable methods and things in these uh, documents. I want you guys to be equipped and armed with everything I know, right? Because how awesome would that be if a person 
really knew. I mean, it was tried and proven they knew some things, and they passed that on to somebody else. That's what we're supposed to be doing anyway. Not for the sake of entertainment. That's not what this is for. This is so that you guys can have an awareness of your surroundings and thrive in the process. That's what that's for. Let me go back here. Let me see. Somebody says, is it wrong not to care anymore for preservation of my life? I, my, here's my major thing here. I do not focus on me. I don't. I'll give an example. There is no way in the world that I would jump in the water and help some. Suppose somebody was trapped underwater, right? And I knew that if I jumped down in the water, it's so deep, I'm going to drown getting there. Right? Um, if I did not know anybody was trapped, I could never go down that deep in the first place. I, I couldn't do it. But if I saw somebody down there, then it's worth my life. It is. But see, that comes from a focus and determination that you're going to use every ounce of what the Lord gave you for the sake of somebody else. I do not measure the cause. I don't do that. So it, it doesn't have to be a big cause. That's one thing I'll never do. Everybody, if, if they have an emergency, they have an emergency. If they're in trouble, they're in trouble. I don't measure causes. I don't weigh one against the other. I seek to be obedient to those areas I'm called in. But I've noticed something. My strength comes from what I'm willing to do for others. My resolve is absolute that way. Otherwise, it's shifty. Very shifty. I trust the Lord to do exactly what he said with my life. Therefore, I need not look after it. But I will assist my brothers and sisters in their lives. That's what he called us to do. Right? He didn't call me to look after my own life. That's not what he called me for. He called me to assist in the gospel, his gospel, which has everything to do with your life. If more people operated like that, everybody would be covered. See, if I'm looking after you and somebody else is looking after me and somebody else is looking after that person, everybody is covered. And that's something through that one act, everybody is covered. That's why I always tell you guys, look after one another. Look out for each other. Is that the end of the, uh, are we the, yeah, we are. We're at the end of the th thing, aren't we? Malachi 2.16 what does this part say? Covers his garments with violence, says the Lord. Mean I've read many times to say that's uh, Malachi two sixteen. Oh my goodness! That now that is a that book gets me in trouble. I just want you to know that the book of Malachi gets that gets me in trouble. I want you guys to know that before I go to that chapter, that gets me in trouble. Just letting you know that it gets me in trouble. Everything that gets me in trouble. I'm gonna have to watch myself in Malachi. Because this book gets me in trouble. I know you guys may not know why now, but it gets me in big trouble. Because it's the way it begins. That's what it is the way it begins. Anyway, um, that was Malachi. Let me go back. This person said Malachi. What was it? Malachi what? I forgot that quick. 2.16. Let's see. 2.16. Malachi 2.16. The Lord, the God of Israel, saith that he hath he hateth, he hateth putting away for one covereth violence with his garment, saith the Lord of hosts. Therefore take heed to your spirit that ye deal not treacherously. But well, you had to back up to understand that. Here's what's talking about. Here's what's talking about. I'm going to start right here. And this have ye done again, covering the altar of the Lord with tears, with weeping, with crying out in so much that he regardeth not the offering anymore, or receive it with good will at your hand. Yet ye say, Wherefore, because the Lord hath been witness between thee and the wife of thy youth against whom thou hast dealt treacherously, yet, yet is she thy companion, the wife of thy covenant? And did not he make one? Yet, yet had he the residue of the Spirit? And whereof one that he might seek a godly seed, therefore take heed to your spirit, and let none deal treacherously against the wife of his youth, 
For the Lord, now you're starting to see it. For the Lord, the God of Israel, saith that he hateth putting away. For one covereth the violence with his garment, saith the Lord of hosts. Therefore, take heed to your spirit that you deal not treacherously. You have you have wearied the Lord with your words. Yet ye say, wherein have we wearied him? When ye say, every one that doeth evil is good in the sight of the Lord, and he delighteth in them. Or, where is the God of judgment? Boy, they do that now. And now I'm not going to get in trouble with this, but of course he's talking about a simple covenant. Simple covenant. And he's talking about dealing treacherously with those you're in covenant with. And he's saying, God does. God takes no pleasure in anybody who puts away somebody else. He takes no pleasure in division, in the nullification of a covenant. He takes no pleasure in that. That's why the apostle said, "Hey, I'm not giving you a new commandment." But if you're if you're unequally yoked with an unbeliever, and that unbeliever, if you guys come to an agreement, that unbeliever wants to go, then let them go. But do not seek to be in covenant with anybody else again. Your relationship to the Lord is the foundation of everything in, in all truthfulness. Now, it sounds weird when you first hear it, right? It sounds like it should be known. But the Lord often says, how can he trust us with a heavenly covenant if he cannot trust us with an earthly covenant? With an earthly covenant, we break those covenants because things are not in our favor, don't we? Because we cannot change the person into what we want them to be, right? Right? With a heavenly covenant, you have what you read. There's a lot to obey. Once you say yes, you have to walk it out. Yes is not complete until you walk it out. I know I'm going to get in trouble for this. Are you guys starting to see that? Unless you walk it out. Right? It's just that. No good. God doesn't encourage the breaking of relationships. People do that. People do that. Because people, they, they get themselves in relationships. And then they utilize that scripture, what God hath drawn together, let no man put us under. I'm sorry to tell people. What that means is, no man has power to take apart what God put together. How about that? What God has put together, nothing has power to take that apart. Nothing. And to this very day, that's been true. But God put together, no man has had power to take apart. What God joined together is in fact together. A lot of these marriages were not joined by God. But under the guise of lust, of security, some for riches, the meanings outside of those. That's why, you know, people get in covenants here. The Lord didn't put those people together. They put themselves together. And then they use that statement against their partner, saying, well, the Lord doesn't want us to separate, so one ends up holding the other hostage. Anyway, there we are with that. Hopefully that helps you understand that a little better. Hopefully. That can be augmented uh, and, and you know, brought out a little more, but it, it's, that's the gist of it in a very simple way. In a very simple way. Okay, who has the next one? Oh, my, my page froze here. Yes. Yeah, it is. Similar says, Mike, in an archive, you once said that you had plans for a table that you made that collects water from areas. Yes. And when the when the time came for it, you would mail the plans to us. Yes. Yes, that's still an option. We we have that. We have uh, some of the, uh, some of the uh, energy backup systems for small devices like phones and laptops and probably a, maybe a 500 to 800 watt desktop, right? There are power solutions that, uh, that, that are very simple, right, to assemble that work very efficiently for days on end without, uh, we don't need maintenance or anything, right? And so, yeah, I'll be giving a lot of that away. So people can actually have that. Now, have an understanding of this, though, that 
during that time, should you be one of the ones that receives this? And you live in a time where the, the you know, things have actually broken down. Your enemy can also have the exact same, you know, information. And, and trying to do the exact same thing based off your plans. Okay. Good to go. Okay, folks, let's see. Let me see where we're at. Somebody says this is a test just for Western culture for about a week. Let me see. Oh, well, yeah, Sister Mara saw that. Is the test just for the Western culture for about a week? No, the, the, uh, the, um, is what a test, Sister Mayor? The, um, for all of NATO. Let's put it that way for all of NATO and all of NATO's systems. They will be uh, coordinated. Get ready for that. So don't let it surprise you with that. All right. What do we have next? Somebody said, I feel like Australia is a ticking time bomb. ATM too quiet. All countries have their issues. As they do, they have their issues. Now, because I know that uh, we're going to have some emergency traffic build up in a few minutes. I'll likely be back later on tonight, guys. I'm going to monitor some things. I'll be in both chat rooms when I do that. I'll also be um, um, getting the um, getting everything set and ready. You guys, just take note that, uh, you know, we're going to be pretty transparent here at COT. Okay? So if you can, do me a favor. Don't compare what we're doing to anybody else's uh, site. They're not crazy like we are. They're not. Please don't do that. I... I I can perceive that some people right, will expect other groups to do the same thing. They can't do that. In fact, it's not wise to do that. Like, like say, for example, COT, when we disclose, when our books are right there on the Internet where you can see it, that's not wise for uh, all these other organizations to do that. That's just not wise. It's not wise at all. Okay, That's just not wise. Not wise at all. So don't expect that of other people. And, and don't, please, try not to compare. If we do something good here, right, don't expect everybody to do that. And don't look down upon anybody who does not do it. But just simply appreciate little things that happen like that. We do that. The, the more open I am with you guys, uh, because there are some hard things, i got to say. And they're very difficult to believe. They won't be when the demonstration is... is uh, you know, in full swing, but before they go into full swing, I want you to see some things. I want you guys to know some things. Folks, I see. Let me go back here. Let me go back here. Oh, my goodness, guys. I'm losing my scrolling key belt in. Fighting equipment over here. Oh, I see why, too. I see why. Why does COT URL say not secure? Because we're not using the secure socket slayer. Because we have nothing that needs to be secured on, on the... Um, you know, when you go to the home page or something like this, there's no information to be sold or anything else. We use a different type of, we're not using uh, the commercial standards either, right? So nobody's going to start stealing information or anything like that. A secured sockets layer, right, is is uh, is a very simple part of a protocol that's utilized to encrypt at higher depth. You know, communications go back and forth. Uh, but what if you're just sending the alphabet? We're sending information about Christ. How about that? That need not be encrypted. Um, they think it's going to help people not tag things to the to your browser and this, that, and the other. I uh, hate to tell them, but uh, all that was for nothing. It was. All of it was for nothing. At any rate, I hope they see it. Folks, some of this, honestly, they probably already have personal info. Everybody has a, a packet. But there's no personal info going here and there. Not here. We do things a lot differently here from the beginning. From the beginning. Why did Satan want Moses' body? Because Satan likes to distort things in history. That's why. In the Bible it says, when Satan speaks a lie, he speaks of his own. Right? What does that mean? Satan will often, when he speaks a lie in 2024, he points back to what he planted in year one. 
He can point a person to archaeology, have that person dig it up, find it and dig it up. Now, because that person found it and dug it up, and it's uh, of a very specific nature, Satan can fill that person's mind with anything. They tell the world what it is based on all this stuff they dug up and the world believes it. And they don't believe the Lord. See how that works? So when you, when it comes to archaeologists, they, they love facts and empirical data. But well, see, the problem with that is Satan planted things historically all over the earth. People right now are digging that stuff up, and what are they doing? They're rewriting history based on what they're finding. It's a known fact that their findings, um, they cause people with the Holy Ghost to have an issue. Let's put it that way. Right? And so when Satan speaks a lie today, he speaks of his own stuff he did a long time ago. Do you guys see that? Like that, I'm being serious with you. I know you guys love Zechariah's Center, but all that stuff that was dug up, why do the interpretations coming off mathematical interpreters, why is it totally different? Why does it tell you the story that Enoch told and not the story Zechariah's Center told? Why do the people who actually decoded the Sumerian text always say Zechariah's Center got it wrong and they're not even discussing that Nibiru, Nibiru object? They're not talking about that. See, because that was not all over the whole earth. Did you know that? It wasn't. How do we know that? Because the Native Americans about that same time, when Samaria was up, there was a civilization here too. The Sumerian language is not by any means the oldest language in the earth. They sit there and lie like that. And when people believe that, they give credence to anybody they want to. Do you see what it is? They're trying to supplant ideologies from the past so that your foundation is messed up. So that you argue based over what they found. And what did Zachariah Sinchin bring out to a lot of people? That Jesus was just another person, probably one of these ancient aliens. Of everybody who read Zachariah Sinchin and makes money off of it, that's the narrative they agree with. That's what they agree with. Did you also know that uh, despite what anybody said, see, you, it's hard to get a hold of it now, but Zechariah Sinchin, because he had some prideful areas in his life, he, he, he left his own writings behind. His position with Christ was less, less than tasteless. Just like Christ before Jesus came. How many groups did Satan fill their hearts to attempt to mimic what Jesus did, many. Do you know that? Do you know that? The virgin birth, right? How many people in history did that happen to? Satan takes authenticity. He'll copy it, make a mockery of it, attempt to duplicate it some other method, some other way. And drag God's people down to the dirt and the whole thing. Because he wants you to doubt the Messiah. If he can make you doubt the Messiah, he's going to get you. He's going to get you. And he's quite effective at that. Somebody said, well, there'll be some sort of lexicon for mythical creatures in the Katie Files. No. Mythos. You know what mythos is, don't you? The stories of Greek pantheon, all these things. You know what that is, don't you? Something happened a long time ago. Something very serious. Well, when it happened, they wanted their children's 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 children to know about it. So they taught songs and poems. They even said at the beginning that people would take these songs and poems and forget why they were songs and poems. They'll miss the meaning of the songs and poems. And they'll forget about the timing in the calendar. And the destroyer will catch them off guard again. The reason they did that was because of the destroyer. That's the time when they told people to abandon all false gods of the earth. To abandon greed and selfishness and all this and the other. They said to abandon it. And to seek the face of the one true God. You know, it's funny because 
at the end of civilization, when they were about to face the des- destroyer, even Egypt spoke about the God of Moses. Isn't that something? The same thing was over here in this nation. The Native Americans spoke about the God of the Hebrews. Now, how did they know about the God of the Hebrews? Well, maybe that's why it's all that Egyptian, the Egyptian things in this country. See, if they wouldn't lie about history to try and support these people who come up with these theories of evolution, Darwin, they would have had enough time to get people to absolutely see. Folks, somebody says, Mike's is strange. These end times don't frighten me. You're a little bit also. I don't about my race, but it's really bothering me to know because I've experienced such strange things in my life. Well, it was that anybody with the, the orange blood type or O positive blood type or any variant that is odd like that. And for everybody else out there, your flesh is not pure. I'm sorry, it's not. It's not pure. In other words, we're mixed up with everything. But your flesh cannot be saved. You're, you have a born again spirit from Christ to overcome your flesh. And the Bible says, die to your flesh daily. You know what that means? Every day. Every day of your life. Stop living to satisfy your flesh. Living complies with the spirit because you believe. Let that be your voluntary act of the day. Grow spiritually and you'll be fully delivered from all things of flesh. That means your flesh has no bearing on your salvation. It cannot keep you in bondage. You can't. We just, we simply believe in his word. That's all. And if we do that, he is just to deliver us. So when it comes to worries about your blood types and things you've dealt with, have an understanding that many people have dealt with similar things. And they're not of that blood type. Others have suffered some very horrific things. And they're not of the orange blood type. One of the most controversial blood types is O-positive. I can tell you that right now. hate to tell everybody that. I know it goes against all this, the, you know, books you're paid for. Sorry. So sorry. But O-positive, most often, the most common things seem to have the, you know, largest thread to the ancient world, don't they? But as far as your flesh is concerned, Jesus came to save your soul, not your flesh. All right, folks. Folks, I'm going to be back probably in a little bit right here in the chat room. I have to monitor some things. I see them going out of control now. We do sit at the dawn of many different changes. Do not become fearful, right? Stay alert, of course. Let that be one of your everyday things. But most importantly, pursue Christ more and more. Listen, pursue him, not because somebody told you. Pursue him out of your heart and do so in truth. Can you do that? Do that. In other words, if you choose to pursue him, then pursue him. But let's let our pursuance be all the way. Let's not hold anything back. Hmm? I know that just messed people up on the blood types, didn't it? <laughs> I know it just did. See, they print one thing, they talk about one thing. They control the facts that you guys read. What I would have to say to you on that, I I probably would hold in the first place. The reason being is because you can't back that up with literature. They're always going to back up their own paradigm. Be wary of any subject that tries to prove to you that something is too common. Do you hear me? When the world tries to prove to you that something is too common, that you shouldn't even look at it, shouldn't think about it, that's when you look into it. If the world tells you something is rare, don't believe the world. It's when they tell you something is common. You know, Dad, that's so common, it's not worth looking into. That's when you take another look. If you're going to end up like the world and their chaos, continue to follow their guidance. And you'll be like everybody else in their system. Operating by their facts that don't even work for them. Okay? You want to supersede that? You want to have useful, 
information. Seeking the Lord is one, but looking into those things that are common of the world. Well, that's a big one. They always put things in plain sight, make them common. So to you, it's no big deal. No one is going to go look up O positive blood, are they? Because it's so common. That's why you should look into it quickly before everything changes. You want to know one of the rarest blood types on earth, That the, one of the blood types that will blow your mind. It's O positive, the adaptive strain. As far as your flesh gets, is concerned, people are mixed up with everything. They're trying to show people they're not mixed up with everything by giving you back DNA results. How trusting we are. What a convenient way to get everybody to believe that they don't have a corrupted lineage. Because if a person knew they had a corrupted lineage, they would go to the Father and say, Father, save my soul. I know now my flesh cannot be saved. But see, if people did that, and they would focus upon the soul, they wouldn't fall for all the tricks of the world that's trying to save everybody's flesh. Every advertisement, every other advertisement you hear about on television is to save your flesh. You know what Jesus said? Those who seek to save their lives are going to lose it. That's all they have. They don't have a born-again spirit. You do. God wants you to nourish the born-again spirit. It can only be nourished with the Word of God. And can I be nourished with this world-based garbage? Satan is creating his perfect little paradigm. Everything is going to be scientific. He loves that. Satan is a legalist. That's why in the Bible he's called the accuser of the brethren. He loves to accuse. By the law, he accuses. What does our father do, though? Our father takes these unorthodox ways to take away the accusation. Doesn't he? The blood of the lamb, the the major sacrifice. And by you simply believing, you can become a new creature in Christ. Yes. And that new creature will be saved, not the old creature. Remember that. The old creature, the old man is doomed. The new creature in Christ is in fact, he is in fact, one of the sons of the living God, and they shall be saved, not the old. But the world is trying to get you to be okay with who you think you are, who you want to be. Makes you comfortable with abominations. Run from the world. Get out of it quickly. Get out of its mindsets and all its failing ways. Run from it. Quickly, because if you don't, it will consume you. And to those of whom it consumes, there will be no salvation. Folks, I may be back in a couple of hours here, right here at COT, okay? In the chat room, possibly on air, to go over a few more things, okay? It just depends. But listen, God bless each of you. You guys take care of one another. I'm going to see you guys throughout this week. This, this weekend is going to be a charged up one. Right, You guys who are around those with heat, please check on the elderly, please. The death toll already went up today. It did. Please check on them. Please do that. Help them out as best you can. So mercy in somebody's life, please. God bless each of you. We'll see you guys next time right here at COT. Oh, and if you heard that song earlier through the broadcast that was different than any other song, I didn't mean to play that, so hopefully you didn't record that. Don't record that one. That was unfinished as part of our documentary series there, okay? That's the COT music stuff there. And you guys hear it in this playlist anyway. You hear a few things in this playlist. You just can't recognize them. I've been slowly rewriting things. Anyway, guys, I'm going to see you next time right here at COT. So God bless all of you.